Hi everybody. Today we're going to be taking notes 5C.3. Notes 5C.3. It is over binomial radical expressions. So that title alone tells me two pieces of information about what we're going to be talking about today. The first is binomial. So we're going to be having two terms and radical. At least one of the terms will have a radical in it. Okay, on this slide, you don't really need to write the property at the top because I can basically sum it up for you. And that's what the text in red is all about. Um, so first of all, again, in this unit, always assume all your variables are positive. But basically, this is like combining like terms. This is exactly like combining like terms. The only catch is they've got radicals. So we have um, a rule. Okay, to combine radicals, the radical itself and the index number have to be identical in order to combine like terms. Meaning you cannot combine a fifth root with a third root. You can't combine a square root of 2x with a fourth root of 2x. The index numbers that tell us the root and the expression underneath that radical, they have to be identical for us to combine them. Okay, let's look at our first term, our first example, excuse me. So we have seven fifth roots of 3xy plus two square roots of 6z minus three fifth roots of 3xy minus five square roots of 6z. So right away, I notice that I have two fifth roots of 3xy. They're identical. The index is the same the expression underneath the radical is the same. So that being the case, that tells me I can do seven minus three and get four. So four fifth roots of three X Y. Then I also notice that I have two square roots of six Z. So two square roots of six Z minus five square roots of six Z. The indexes are the same. The expressions are the same. So two minus five is minus three square roots of six Z. And that's your final answer. That's as far as you can go. You can't combine them anymore. So now, looking at example two, I want you to try to simplify and clean up this expression, okay, by combining like terms. So we're going to hit pause, work on it, consult with your group if necessary, and then I'll join you again in a minute or so. Okay, so now um, let's see if you got the same thing I did. I got 19 cube roots of 7x plus 3 cube roots of 5x. So I noticed that I had 2 cube roots of 7x, so that was simply 4 plus 15. And then I had 2 cube roots of 5x, so that was negative 6 plus 9, and that's how I got the 3. Okay. If you have any questions, you can just uh, pause the video and Mr. Wildauer can answer those for you. Okay, let's look at example three because our examples are not always going to be that easy where the light terms are so blatantly obvious. Okay, so we're going to look at, well, what if we have a scenario where they're not the same, but we can simplify them. So let's take this example for, for starters. I have the square root of 12 plus the square root of 75 minus the square root of 3. Now, obviously, none of these are alike at first glance, but they are able to be simplified. They're all square roots. So let's simplify these and see what we can do. So 12, that starts out 2 times 6. 6 becomes 2 times 3. So I see that 12 simplifies to be 2 square roots of 3. 75 is 3 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. So those 5s can be grouped together leaving five square roots of three. And then we have obviously minus the square root of three. So 
this is what it looks like. 12 simplifies to be 2 square roots of 3. 75 simplifies to be 5 square roots of 3. And then we have minus the square root of 3. Now, these are all square roots of 3, so I can just combine them. 2 plus 5 is 7 minus 1 is 6 square roots of 3. So it is okay before you begin to see if you can simplify them and then have anything that might combine. So at first glance, if they don't look combinable, see if you can simplify them and then see where you go from there. Now, let's have you try example four. Five cube roots of 24 minus three cube roots of 81 plus four square roots of eight. Now, before we hit pause, just a word to the wise. Remember, if it's a cube root, you've got to have three of the same number to circle before they can come out of the radical. So you've got to have three of the same number. We looked at this a little bit on day one and especially on day two, but you've got to have three of the same number before you simplify and bring those outside the radical. Okay, so let's hit pause, work on it, ask your table mates if you need help, and then we'll, we'll come back together and we'll look at the answer. Okay. So, this is what I got. 7 cube roots of 3 plus 8 square roots of 2. Because 24 broke down into 2 times 2 times 2 times 8. So, I had three twos. I circled those out. So, that became 2 times 5 is 10. And then cube root of 81, that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I have three threes and then a cube root of 3 left over. So it becomes 3 cube roots of 3. Um, so 10 minus 3, those are both cube roots of 3, so that's 7. And then 8, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So that's a square root though, so I can only circle 2. So 2 of those 2's come out as a 2, and then we have 2 times 4 is 8, so 8 square roots of 2 is how we ended up with that. Okay, so again, sometimes you might have to do a little simplification work before you do combining of any like terms. And like here on example 4, we couldn't combine that any further, well A, because it's cube root of 3 and cube root of 2, but one's a cube root, one's a square root, so we couldn't combine those even if we wanted to. Okay, so now on example 5, we're going to look at multiplying binomial radical expressions. That means we're going to be multiplying a binomial times another binomial, and at least one term in each binomial has a radical, okay? So we're going to look at how do we multiply those together. Hint, hint, you're going to use FOIL or you can box. If you can do FOIL or you can do box, you got this. All right, so let's look. So I have 4 plus 2 square roots of 2 times 5 plus 4 square roots of 2. So I chose to FOIL. Um, again, you could box. It's whatever method for multiplication that works the best for you. That's the one I want you to use, is the one that works the best for you. So, I just did FOIL. So, 4 times 5, and then 4 times 4 square roots of 2, 5 times 2 square roots of 2, and then 2 square roots of 2 times 4 square roots of 2. So, now, I always get people, oh my gosh, do I have to show this step? No, you do not have to show the step I've just displayed. If you can do that in your head, that's awesome. I'd at least write out this next step, because this is the step that if you could do this, this first step, if you could do that first step in your head, at least write out that second step that I'm about to show you, which is this one, because I don't want you to make a mistake. Don't try to do it all in your head, because A, I've got to have some work to grade, but also, too, you're more likely to make a mistake if you're trying to hold all of these numbers in your head. 
you're going to make a mistake. You can make a sign mistake. You can make a radical mistake. But at least show the second step. Again, you can skip the first step if you can do that in your head, but at least show the second step. That way you kind of know where you're going and you have kind of, you know, a step-by-step -step process and you can go back if you made a mistake and find it. So, I ended up with 20 plus 16 squared to 2 plus 10 squared to 2 plus, and then 2 times 4 is 8. Because remember, multiplication is computative, meaning the order doesn't matter. Okay, so I multiplied my coefficients 2 times 4 to get 8, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4. But wait, the square root of 4 is 2. So... That gets me 20 plus 16 squared to 2 plus 10 squared to 2 plus 8 times 2. And that's 16. Okay, now we can combine the middle two terms because they're both the square root of 2. But then we can combine 20 and 16 as well. So that gets me to be 36 plus 26 square root of 2. Now, again... Um, People always ask, well, how much work do I have to show? Do I have to show all the work you showed? And the answer is no. Um, first of all, I'm showing you every single step so that nobody gets lost and nobody goes, where did she get this from? Okay, so that's one reason. Um, also, too, for people who are at home trying to follow along, it's a little bit easy if easier if they can show every step. As for what I really truly expect, um, if you're showing me work, which you should be, um, I would say probably steps two and four, and then the final answer. So steps two, four, and five, if you could do, you know, you could probably do steps one and three in your head. But again, if you can't and you need that visualization, go ahead and show it, because I'd rather you show a lot of work and get it right than try to shortcut it, and then you get it wrong, and I can't find where you went wrong to show it to help you. So... It's always better to show too much work than it is not enough, okay? But again, if you're wondering, oh my gosh, what's the bare minimum? Steps two, four, and then the final answer, step five, okay? So, I want you to try this. So, instead of having square roots of twos, we've got square roots of x's. And remember, there's imaginary ones in front of those square roots of x if you need that. So again, assume all variables are positive. So we're gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna let you work it. If you're stuck, ask your table mate. Your classmates are some of your best resources. So pause the video here, and then we'll join up again here in just a second when you get it solved. Okay, so did you get this? 15 minus two square roots of x minus x. And that's as far as you go, guys, because we're not trying to solve this. We're just simplifying. There's, there's truly really not an equals. It doesn't equal anything. Okay, so we are just trying to clean it up and simplify it. Okay, so we have 15 minus 2 square roots of x minus x as our final answer. Okay, example seven. Let's talk about multiplying conjugates. Okay, so multiplying conjugates. Um, if you remember last unit, an example in unit 5b, we discussed that conjugate root theorem that says imaginary and irrational numbers always have a conjugate. I think kind of in class we referred to them as a buddy. So if we have a plus b squared roots of 3, then we're also going to have a minus b squared roots of c. Okay, similarly, if we have a minus b squared roots of 3, then we've got or um, C, excuse me, A minus B square roots of C, then we also have A plus B square roots of C. Okay, so they always have their kind of fraternal twin, if you will, because one is plus B, the other one's minus B. Okay, and remember, we never change the sign of A. Okay, we never change the sign of A. You always change the sign on the radical. It's plus the radical and minus the radical. Um, if you get a problem that's written like 2 square roots of 5 plus 7, Flip that guy around. Make it in A plus B squared to C format because I saw that a lot in unit 5B. 
there was that one problem, I think, was it your review or one of the homeworks? I can't remember. But it was not written in A plus the square root format. It was square root plus A. And so when y'all formed the conjugate, you negated the A when you should have really been negating the square root. So always, 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 if it's not written in this order, turn it around so that it is. So that way you don't make mistakes forming your conjugates. Okay? So now we're going to see why do... Why do we multiply the conjugates? So let's look at this guy. What is the product of 5 plus the square root of 7 times 5 minus the square root of 7? So you can see that these are conjugates because one's plus the square root, the other one's minus the square root. But guys, we're, we're just going to FOIL. You can FOIL, you can box. It doesn't matter. So when I FOIL, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times negative square root of 7 is minus 5 square root of 7. 5 times plus square root of 7 is 5 square root of 7. And then positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of 7 times square root of 7, square root of 49. But aha, square root of 49, well, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself. Check it out. We have negative 5 square root of 7 and positive 5 square root of 7. So, they're out of here. They cancel each other out. And now we can get back to it. I know the square root of 49. It's 7. So I end up with 25 minus 7 is 18. So this is why we multiply conjugates is because, look, we started out with radicals and now they're all gone. So that's one way. And I think you may have an idea of what's coming up. And you're right, we're going to have to rationalize our denominator. Um, and we're going to do that by using conjugates. Kind of like back in the quadratic unit before winter break, we if we had 2 plus 5i on the bottom, then we multiplied top and bottom by 2 plus 5i. We multiplied by a conjugate, and the i's went away. It's the same thing here. So... Let's, so let's look at example 8. We're going to rationalize the denominator, okay? So our problem looks like this. Square root of 3 minus square root of 7 divided by the square root of 7 plus the square root of 3. Now, radicals in the numerator, totally cool. We don't care. Radicals in the denominator, oh, you betcha we care about that. So we cannot, that's like one of those big, huge math law rules things. You cannot have radicals in the denominator because radicals are irrational. So, well, unless it's a perfect square, but anyways, you get my point. But, um, so we need to get these radicals out of the denominator. They're, they're very, very math illegal. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to form the conjugate of the bottom, okay? So if I have square root of 7 plus square root of 3, I'm going to multiply it by square root of 7 minus the square root of 3. But if I multiply the bottom by that, I also have to multiply the top, okay? So you're going to multiply top and bottom of your fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Always by the denominator, okay? Don't ever mess with it. No, I'm not even going to mention it. Don't even want to form the conjugate of the numerator. But we are going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. Because check it out. Square root of 7 minus square root of 3 divided by square root of 7 minus square root of 3, that's a special form of 1. So what we're doing is we're doing a little plastic surgery on it, okay? We're not changing its value. We're not changing who it is. We're just changing how it looks, okay? And like I said, you're multiplying by 1. So you're really not changing the value of this expression. So guess what? We've got to FOIL the top and we got to FOIL the bottom. So square root of 3 times square root of 7, square root of 21. Square root a square root of 3 times negative square root of 3, negative square root of 9. Negative square root of 7 times square root of 7, negative square root of 49. And then negative square root of 7 times negative square root of 3 is positive square root of 21. Rinse and repeat with the bottom. 
Square root of seven times square root of seven, square root of 49. Square root of seven times negative square root of three, negative square root of 21. Square root of three times square root of seven, positive square root of 21. And then square root of three times negative square root of three is negative square root of nine. So right away, I'm like, holy Toledo Batman, those are out of here because they cancel each other out. Negative square root of 21 plus positive square root of 21, go away. Then I'm gonna change anything that is a perfect square, I'm gonna change it to its answer. I'm gonna take the square root if it's a perfect square. So I end up with square root of 21. This is where you've gotta be super cognizant of your signs. So minus the square root of nine becomes minus three, minus the square root of 49 becomes minus seven. And then on the bottom, square root of 49 is seven minus square root of nine, which is three. So then I just combine like terms. So I get negative 10 plus two square roots of 21 over four. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can break it up, which is what I did, put each element of the numerator over the denominator, and then reduce. So negative 10 over four is negative five halves, and then two goes into four twice. So it becomes negative five over two plus the square root of 21 over two, which you can then, since they're both over two, you can combine it back and make it negative five plus the square root of 21 over two. Or you can just go, oh my goodness, two goes into 10, two, and four. So you just reduce the 10, two, and four by two, and you're back here as well. Okay? So if you have questions about this or you wanna see that, see that again, or you want to pause it and just kinda of let that sink in, that's totally cool. Just let uh, Mr. Wildar know and he'll get that paused for you. Okay, let's look at an application problem. An object moves at the speed of five plus the square root of three feet per second. How long will it take for the object to travel 15 feet? Now, you might see something like this in your near future, okay? Just, just saying in your near future, coming up soon, you may see something like this. So I'd make sure I know how to do application problems that involve binomial radical expressions, okay? So let's talk about what we know, okay? What do we know? Well, the first thing we know is that this is a distance, rate, and time problem. We've got the rate, that's how fast, that's the speed, that's the rate, so that's five plus the square root of three. We know he needs to, the object needs to travel 15 feet, but we want to find time. We want to find time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our distance problem and then we're gonna plug in the values that we know. I know distance, I know rate, but I'm gonna leave time a variable. So 15 equals five plus the square root of three times time. Okay, to solve for time, I have to divide by five plus the square root of three. I have to get time by itself. You, I know your first inclination might be to, to distribute. No, don't do that. That's gonna make your life a nightmare. Just consider five plus the square root of three, that is one value, like a seven or a 10. It's one value. So if you're multiplying by that one value, you're gonna divide by that one value. So they cancel out on the right and you're left with 15 over five plus the square root of three, but it, it, we know that's illegal because we can't have a radical in our denominator. So since it's a binomial with a radical, I have to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm gonna, let's see, what's the conjugate of five plus the square root of three? 
5 minus the square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom because 5 minus the square root of 3 over 5 minus the square root of 3 is a fancy form of 1. So on the top, I'm going to do 15 times 5, which is 75, and 15 times min uh, minus the square root of 3, and I get minus 15 square roots of 3. On the bottom, I foiled that. 5 times 5 is 25. Minus 5 square roots of 3 plus 5 square roots of 3, and then positive times a negative is a negative, square root of 3, square root of 3, square root of 9. So what has happened has ha that I wanted to happen has happened. Those radicals are going away. And 9 is a perfect square, so I can change that to 25 minus 3. And, of course, I cleaned up the top. 15 times 5 is 75 minus 15 square roots of 3. And then finish up my cleanup job, and I get 75 minus 15 square roots of 3 over 22 seconds. Please do not forget your units. Please do not forget your units. Okay. Let's try to stretch our brains. Now, these are going to be a little complicated, and it's okay. I want you to work in your groups and try to work these out. Um, after this slide, I have um, the problems worked out. So let's look at our first three problems. I want you to simplify the first two, and then I want you to perform subtraction on the second. Here's a hint. On the third, I'm sorry, on the third problem is where we're subtracting. On the third problem, it might be good to rationalize each part and then subtract. Just saying, you know. Okay, so let's pause the video here. Work with your groups. You might need about five minutes um, to work on these. And uh, then we'll come back and I'll give you the answers and show you the work. Okay, so by now you've had time to work these. Let's look at our first example. I got 89 plus 42 square roots of 3 over negative 239. And I know some people are out there like, what? How'd she get that? I'm going to show you. Okay, on the second one, I got 1 plus 2 cube roots of 4, or if you had flipped it around, it'd be 2 cube roots of 4 plus 1. Same answer. Okay, even though the top one is pretty much the preferred format. But that's okay. I would not count off. And then for the subtraction problem, I got 4 square roots of 3. And you're probably like, what? And that's okay. Again, I'm going to show you how we got this. Okay? So let's go to our next slide. That's where I put the work in. So if you look here, um, I kind of took snapshots of my work. So the top left is that first example. So that denominator has a binomial radical expression. So to get rid of a binomial radical expression, you've got to multiply by the conjugate, which in this case is 2 plus 3 square roots of 27. So top and bottom get multiplied by 2 plus 3 square roots of 27. Now, some of you might be thinking, can, can I, like, simplify this radical first? Can I simplify square root of 27? And you can. It really doesn't matter. I saved all my simplification for the very end, but that's just me. Um, so let's see how we did. Um, I foiled it and got 8, and then 12 square roots of 27 plus 2 square roots of 27 is 14 square roots of 27. And then 1 times 3 is 3, and then square root of 27 times square root of 27. Yeah, I could have multiplied that out, but I could square it too, because when you square it, when you multiply something by itself, isn't it squaring? And then you square the square root, square it goes away. So, and then on the bottom, 
I had two times two is four. And then I didn't show this step, but I end up with six squared to 27 minus six squared to 27, that went away. And then minus times the positive is a negative. And then three times three is nine. And then of course, square root of 27 squared to 27. I'm just gonna leave that as square root of 27 squared because that's ultimately what it is. And then of course, um, if you look at the top there, when you square the square root of 27, you're just left with 27. And which becomes, if you look on the third, I guess that'd be one, two, three, maybe the, the, that four step maybe, I get eight plus 14 squared to 27 plus 81. And then on the bottom, square root of 27 squared is 27, so nine times 27, and then actually negative nine times 27, and then add four. So I end up with four minus 243. And then I could just clean it up from there. So eight plus 81 is 89, four plus 14 squared is 27, and then that gives me negative 239. Now this is where I personally chose to simplify my radical. I got all the conjugate stuff and the foiling and combining like terms and all. I got that out of the way and then I'm like, Shh, can I simplify any radicals? So I'm like, ooh, I can square, I can simplify 27 because remember that's three times three times three. So that, that comes out because it's a square root. So three square roots of three. And then I just did 14 times three square roots of three, which is 42 square roots of three. Now, some people are, will tell you, oh my gosh, we don't put negatives in the denominator. I have never seen that rule officially. Some people just don't like negatives in the denominator, so they bring them up to the top. Why run the risk of making a sign mistake? If it's negative in the bottom, leave it in the bottom. Don't make life more difficult on yourself, okay? The way it's written is perfectly mathematically fine. Okay, so the second example, that was where you had the cube root of two. Now this is kind of um, a little bit of a flashback from what we did on day two. Okay, so I had to rationalize that, which it's a cube root, so that means I need to multiply three of them together, but I've already got that one. So instead, um, so since I've already got that one, I only need two more to get rid of that cube root. So I multiply top and bottom by cube root of two, over cube root of two, I multiplied that twice. That's why you see two there, because if you look along the bottom, you now see that I've got three of those. And you're like, well, how do you handle that when you've got a binomial in the top? Well, what I chose to do, if you kind of look up there, what I chose to do is cube root of two times cube root of two became cube root of four on the top, and then I, that made it easier to one radical, and then I could distribute that cube root of four. And then on the bottom, that just became the cube root of two times two times two, which is cube root of eight. So if we look at that next step, this is where I distributed the cube root of four. So four cube roots of four, plus now that at the end became the cube root of eight. And on the bottom, I knew the cube root of eight was two. So that became four cube roots of four plus up top, cube root of eight is two, all over two. Now you can use that technique that I showed you on an earlier slide where you can break it up into four cube roots of four over two plus two over two, and that becomes two cube roots of four plus one. Or you can be like, ooh, four, two, and two. They're all divisible by two, and then you can divide them by two and not have to break it up. But that's a matter of personal choice. If you look at the third example, this is what I was talking about. It's easier if you rationalize each side before you combine. Now, here's where you're going to make a mistake if you're gonna make one. This problem was originally minus. Yeah, I don't wanna have to be distributing a negative over a binomial after I've already simplified it, okay? So what I chose to do is change that to a plus and then I made that four up there negative. So, that way I'm distributing a negative four, the multiplication, the signs, they all take care of themselves. So I rationalized the denominator on the left with the square root of five plus the square root of three on top and bottom. So I got four square roots of five plus four square roots of three. And of course we know the O and the I are gonna drop out. So I got square root of 25 minus square root of nine. On the right side, I had that 
because it made it plus a negative. So I had that negative four. And this time the conjugate on the right side this time was square root of five minus square root of three. So up top I had minus four square roots of five um, minus and times a negative. So negative times a negative is a positive plus four square roots of three. And then on the bottom it was still square root of 25 minus square root of nine. So, um, I'm like, well, the denominators technically are the same. So look, I have four square roots of five minus four square roots of five up top. They're gone. And then four square roots of three plus four square roots of three is eight square roots of three. On the bottom, square root of 25 was five, square root of nine was three. So I had eight square roots of three over five minus three, which then turned and simplified to be two. So I had eight square roots of three over two, which in the end simplifies to four square roots of three. Okay, so we've done a lot today. So we've worked out. So, you know, this is my limited experience knowledge of working out. So I know when you work out, then you've got to cool down because your brain is a muscle. So you've got to cool your brain down. Okay, because we've really worked our brains hard today. So I want you to work these in your group and compare the results. A little bit easier, just a little bit of a review from day two, a little bit of a review from today. So, um, because again, you're going to see this again very soon, like next class. So anyways, so I want you to work these in your group and compare the results. So we're going to pause the video, give you time to work them, and then we'll move on. Okay, so for the first one, square root of 32 minus square root of 50. Now, obviously, they do not combine, so you must simplify. And when you do, you get negative square root of 2. This middle fella, I had to rationalize the denominator by using the conjugate of the denominator. So I had to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 plus square root of 5. And when I simplified, I got that. Don't panic. I've got the work on the next slide. And then this guy, you had to multiply by cube root of 2 over 2 twice to get that denominator rationalized. And when you do, you get 5 cube roots of 4 over 2. Okay, so let's look at the work. Okay, so I kind of just, instead of piece, take, I couldn't take screenshots of each little, so I just took a whole thing. So if you look in the top left, I simplified the square root of 32. I broke it down at its prime factorization. I had two groups of twos that were coming outside the radical. So two times two is four, four square roots of two. 50 simplified to five square roots of two. So if I have something that's, if I have four square roots of two in my bank account, but I need to pay five square roots of two, then I'm short of square root of two. So negative square roots of two. On the right-hand side, you'll see that, again, I multiply top and bottom by this, the conjugate of the denominator, square root of 3 plus square root of 5. And on the top, 2 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 5, did a little distribution. On the bottom, I did not show that middle step because I knew it was going to cancel out. So I just had square root of 9 minus square root of 25. Please, 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 when you're multiplying by the conjugates, please be cognizant of your signs because that's where a lot of your mistakes will happen is with signs. You know the concept, but the signs will flub you up. Okay, so we don't want anybody getting flubbed up and all that. So square root of 9 becomes 3. Square root of 25 is 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Holy Toledo, Batman. 2 square root of 3, 2 square root of 5, negative 2 on the bottom. Those reduce to be negative square root of 3 minus the square root of 5. And then lastly, the third problem. That's where I already had a cube root of 2, so I needed two more cube roots of 2 to get 3 on the bottom. Well, if I multiply the bottom by 2 of them, I have to multiply the top by cube root of, three, cube root of 2 and cube root of 2. So that became 5 cube roots of 4. Cube root of 8 on the bottom becomes 2, and you can't simplify that anymore. Okay, so this concludes the lesson. Your homework is worksheet 5C.3. Now, just a quick reminder. 
You have a quiz next class period. That's right, you have a quiz over 5C1 to 5C3, okay? So, um, so again, 5C1 to 5C3. Um, go back, review your homework, do all of 5C3, get all of that done, okay? You can go back and watch these videos at home. I've posted them to Canvas. They're good to go. So, I mean, even if you don't like watch the whole video, if you're struggling on a concept, go back and use that little bar at the bottom, the little slider bar, and get to that point in the video where you're like, dude, this is something I really didn't understand. I'm gonna go back and watch the explanation on it, okay? Um, come in and see somebody for help, okay? But just know you have a quiz next class period. So you've got videos. You've got the, the, the lesson videos that I'm posting. I've also posted tutorial videos. You've got the PowerPoints. You've got the PDFs. You've got tutoring. If I'm not here, please go find another teacher that is. You've got the tutoring center. So um, please just really take advantage of all of that because I think it's going to be very beneficial for y'all. Okay, and again, the more you practice with these things and these radicals and these concepts, the better you're going to get at them, okay? Sitting in class, watching a lesson, taking notes is not merely enough. We have to practice. Remember, if you follow the rules, you'll get there. But this is a very rules-oriented unit, okay? All right, so... Um, as far as I know, I will be back at work um, Monday. Um, but if I'm not, there are plenty of teachers here that are willing to help you. So please go get the help in tutoring that you need. Don't just sit there and rely on, oh, she wasn't here or something like that, or I'm just too busy. Please seek out if you need help, get the help from another teacher, get the help from me, watch the video. All right? Okay. So I will see you guys back in class. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.